The Adeptus Custodes are all that remain of the planet's defenders against the tide of green skin aggression. Will the Orc Ferocity be enough to break their resolve? Welcome to 40k in 40 minutes. Greetings 40k fans to another exciting dive into the grim dark future of the 41st millennium. My name is Nicholas and I'm excited to bring you today's 2000 point match as some fan favorites return to face off in their first battle against each other. James brings his classic orc energy to match up against the war mistress, Tanya, with her newly finished army of Adeptus Custodes. The two guests have been regulars on our show, James playing most recently in our recreation of the Battle for Armageddon, and Tanya last showing up on a team with James in our latest Apocalypse game. Now, the two friends finally show up to face each other, and we know, win or lose, they will always bring us great games, awesome sportsmanship, and boundless enthusiasm. I'm Tanya, otherwise known as the War Mistress. I co-host Forge the Narrative podcast, and I do a whole bunch of other stuff. And today, I'm here to play my brand new Custodes army. The Adeptus Custodes, as of this recording, have an incredible win record, and are an army made up of small numbers of very tough models that have high potential to dish out and take a lot of damage. Today, she's running the Solar Watch variant of Custodes, allowing her to add one to her advance and charge rolls, as well as charge even when a unit has fallen back. Her Shield Captain Warlord has taken the Solar Watch's Sally Forth Warlord trait as well, allowing her to select a unit to advance and charge. The rest of her HQ slots consist of a Shield Captain on Jet Bike, the character Trajan Valoris, a powerful character able to take on whole units all by himself. Her army consists of three squads of Custodian Guards, Allurus Custodians, a Contemptor Gladys Dreadnought, Virtus Praetors, a Vexless Praetor, and Vigilators. Lastly, a Telamon Heavy Dreadnought provides some very heavy support. This unit has been the big boogeyman of Custodes' list for a while, and with good reason. It can pack a punch and take a hit. Expect it to be a key part of Tanya's strategy. I enjoy playing the Custodes because they're so different than my other armies. They're super elite. I just have a few models that I have to bring with me to the game store or to play on tabletop. So I'm excited. Uh, today I get to take on Tanya and her Custodes. Uh, new book. I have not faced it yet. I'm interested to see what it does and what I can do against it. James has become such a regular on our channel and for good reason. His boundless enthusiasm for the army he plays is infectious and he is always a joy to watch. He does have an uphill battle today though. Custodes are an incredibly tough army that tend to slowly and methodically take their opponents apart. James has selected the Goths for his clan culture, granting him extra hits on sixes and extra strength on the charge. To that end, he's brought some very hard hitting units himself. The Prophet of the Wog is here, Gazgul Thraka takes the field, riding in his personal battle wagon of doom. To take advantage of those abilities, he's brought buckets of dice in the form of four units of boys and two units of the new Beast Snaga boys. A couple of trucks will offer protection for the Mega Knobs as they run up the table. Leading this detachment is a big mech with shock attack gun, one of my favorite units in the York Codex due to its sheer crazy potential to do massive amounts of damage or virtually nothing. Accompanying the big mech is a war boss with a tax squig, two units of mega knobs, a knob on smash a squig, and some squig hog boys. Squigs turn into bikers, a suitably orky unit if ever there was one. I'm really hoping maybe I can get the big boss to crash up against the big boss, Trajan and uh, Gazgo head to head. That would be something interesting to see. Today's mission is Tide of Conviction from the, from the 2022 Nakmand? Nekmand? Nukmand? Match play mission pack. Six objectives are placed on the board with a single one in the center of each deployment zone. You score points at the beginning of each turn for controlling two, controlling three, and controlling more than your opponent. A mission that might favor James slightly as he has more units and better chance of early board control. Additionally, you can score primary points for holding the objective marker in the opponent's half of the board, and extra points at the end of the game for controlling the objective markers in the opponent's half of the board. One wrinkle in this mission is that if you ever do not control your home objective, you will not gain that extra command point each turn. Each player additionally selects three secondary objectives to try and score during the game. James has chosen Retrieve Nakban Data, scoring points by doing actions with units in each table quarter, Assassinate, scoring points for killing characters, and Engage in All Fronts, getting points at the end of each turn depending on how many table quarters you control. Tanya has also chosen Assassination as James has a number of characters, but has chosen Grind Them Down and Behind Enemy Lines as her other two. Today's episode of 40k and 40m is brought to you by Audible. Aside from an extensive catalog of audiobooks from a wide variety of genres, the vast majority of Black Library's 40k content can be found on Audible. 
Start listening with a free 30-day Audible trial and get access to thousands and thousands of all you can listen to audiobooks, original entertainment, and podcasts included in their Plus catalog. Visit audible.com slash play on tabletop. You can text play on tabletop to 500 500. I personally have been listening to the Black Legion series by Aaron Debsky Bowden while getting my hobby time in or commuting to work. And while the story is fantastic, I have to warn you that this is the quickest way to get inspired to start another army. Also, I don't think I can ever look at Chaos Space Marines the same way again. Perhaps Horus really was right all along. Regardless, I can highly recommend Audible and the audiobook catalog you can find there. Once again, visit audible.com slash playontabletop or text playontabletop to 500, 500 And you too can be inspired to start far too many armies than you have hobby time for. And now, back to the game. So from what I've heard and read on the internet, the book is very strong. So I've got to see if I can take control of the primary and, and just, just run the score up as best I can before I'm wiped. Today we're playing on the remains of a destroyed city. Plenty of line of sight blocking buildings and ruins will mean that smart placement of good fire lines will be key. The amount of infantry that James has may turn out to be a slight advantage for this table, as hiding them from the dreaded Telamon may prove vital. This is the fighty Mega Knobs and the War Boss. That's the Beast Snagga Boys in a truck. So I have to deploy in such a way that I can maybe layer my forces and have counter punch options as I move certain uh, units forward. Gazgul's Chariot. Truck Boys with the big mech with a shock attack gun. I'm looking down at the table now, and there's a lot of two plus armor saves, four plus invulnerable saves. All those two ups are one ups in cover. I don't know how I'm gonna get through all this. I only really brought AP1. Uh, yeah. I am concerned. I have don't have a lot of experience playing against the Golden Boys, but uh, we're hoping to uh, rain down some choppas upon their noggins. I also don't really know what to, what to expect of your list. I know that James is an orc player through and through. I have played with James as uh, my teammate, but I've never played against him, so I'm not really too sure what to expect. I don't know if he is going to play some mind games. I don't know if he's going to be super tactical or, or anything like that. I'm just really excited to play this game because we're going to have a lot of fun. Well, that's so, good. Neither of us yeah. know what to expect, so I guess we will roll and fire this game up. Rub some initiative into this dice real quick. All right. You got it. I'm renouncing it. Don't call me Mr. Initiative anymore. It's over. I can't win initiative anymore. Okay. I really, really wanted to go second, but I won the initiative roll, and that doesn't feel super comfortable to me, because that means that I have to sort of push the action, and that's not my comfort zone. This is shaping up to be a very interesting contest between these two generals, and I can't wait to see what happens next. On to turn one. I feel really, really nervous. Um, my win record with Custodes is actually not that good, and uh, I'm afraid people are gonna make fun of me because they're supposedly the big boogeyman. You uh, better not lose me, I will make fun of you. Well, <laughs> it's because you love me. I'll be all over the internet. 
This mission is extremely hard for me as a player because I tend to play reactively and defensively, but this mission requires me to play a little bit more aggressively because I have to go after the objectives in James's half of the table. Tanya starting off aggressively. The shield captain uses his solar watch ability to allow the Allurus Terminators to be able to advance and still shoot normally. Vexilus will advance. Yep. This unit of guardians will also advance. It's a risky move here as Tanya decides to turbo boost her jet bike shield captain to go across the field. It enables her to score behind the enemy lines on turn one. However, it does mean that the character is in the open for a counter charge. Um, I think that's all the moving that I'm gonna do. So, uh, I'm gonna start shooting some stuff. Table scared. <laughs> scared, Nick. Why are you scared, James? Why are you scared? I needed this unit to shoot one time. The Telemon Dreadnought has a very powerful shooting and melee. However, uh, in my past games, the shooting has been quite lackluster. So I'm hoping in this game, Maybe he'll actually do something with his shooting. Here we go, the moment I've been waiting for, that Telemon with his big guns fires into the truck. <sighs> he usually whips this so hard. Yeah, whip it hard. Hitting on twos. Okay. Threes. Threes. <laughs> <laughs> they equal three together. <laughs> uh, five shots. Hitting on twos. Oh my. And I need fives. Well, the Telemon still isn't doing anything in my shooting phase. Hey! Sorry. Big swing, yeah, big miss. That goes. Yeah. 18 is it? It's 18, yeah. So three damage. Okay, so three damage. How can I suck her down to seven? I don't think it'll ever be. Three Sorry. Oh, okey so 24, so 30 shots from these boys. Okay. Uh, so I take one. Dude, you You're know what? pretty good. My saves are on point. Yeah. So I need a 10, but my shield host is plus one. Nice. To charges. So down to a nine. So I need a nine. Hey. No. I am not going to spend a CP to reroll that. Oh, feeling a lot better now, a lot better now. Tanya did almost nothing to me. The truck survived. Its contents are gonna be firing freely now. Uh, she failed her charge. I mean, I'm feeling a lot better. I feel like there's a chance here. There's a chance here for something for me here. Sorry, Tanya, that was a rough go with the Dreadnought. Okay. He's a lot of points to okay. get nothing out of. It's okay. Tanya ends her turn having accomplished very little. Her charges have failed and her shooting was inconsequential. Tanya scored two points for behind enemy lines, but nothing else. Here we go, James. Big opportunity here. With Tanya's stuff all moved forward, they are right where you want them. Close enough to get in and crump it. I feel like... You feel pretty good? Feeling like pretty good. His once per game ability to deafen eardrums and allow extra attacks and to advance and charge his entire army. Will he do it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everything's crashing and breaking. <laughs> okay. War boss bails out. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will advance with the war boss for another three inches. We will advance the mega knobs. Just one. So I'm actually gonna advance these guys yep. for an extra two. The boss knob as well for another three. Oh no, here comes Gaz, Tanya, look out. We'll advance him to be safe. This goes an extra inch. Makari two.
These boys here will just shoot their sluggas into the Don Eagle jet bike. Two up. <laughs> okay. Five yep. up. You okay? Yeah. Hey, okay. Got it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, these guys have assault weapons, mm -hmm. so I guess they will shoot into here. Okay. Nope. This truck, which didn't advance, will have five shots into the bikes. Mm -hmm. Nope. Let's do this unit here. Big shooter into the unit of Terminators. Okay. They're good. And then the dudes inside, so the Beast Snagger boys inside. Terminators. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> this truck. Okay. So it's gonna shoot it rockets okay. into the bikes. I will spend one CP okay. for arcane genetic alchemy. Transhuman, got it. So I'll be wounding them up. Does, wait. Does Trajan give it back to me? Yep. It's free. It's free. It's free. Four up and boom. <laughs> Those are three flat a pop. I will spend one to reroll one. Okay. Ooh, that could have been so much worse. Okay, then we're gonna do the truck itself. It will shoot into the bikes. Two. So twos, he's good. Okay, now we will do um, the shock attack gun, custodian guard at the back. Uh, actually, let's see what the strength is first before I declare where oh, I'm yeah. shooting. Oh yeah, uh, Eight. So yeah, we'll do those guys. Okay. Threes. With an army as elite as the custodians are, every model matters. So we will charge. Mm -hmm. So I should be smart here. Where's the over, where's the dangerous Overwatch coming from? Well, let's just start right here with this battle wagon. It's going to charge into your captain on the bike. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. I have Go to ahead. do I have to do tangle foots at the beginning of your charge phase. Okay. A really powerful custody stratagem is the tangle foot grenade. And basically you pay one command point and then you roll a d6 dice and whatever the result is, the opponent has to subtract that from a move or a charge roll. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So. That's really good. I'm glad I got that extra inch on him now. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, nothing changes here? No. So the battle wagon does a six, so he's in. And you'll be minus one. Well, it's a really powerful strat when you roll better than a one. I'm Sometimes going it's to, minus six, you know? I'm going to charge him now with these boys. That was the risk with the shield captain. He's out in the open now. Can he survive? Five? I don't think so. Nope. So, good thing we're uh, forks. Here we go. Seven. That should be it. Do it. Gaz and Makari charge into the Allurus Terminators, while on the other side of the table, the bikes get swarmed by Mega Knobs and Smash -a Squigs. Okay, so let's do, let's get the snob on a Smash -a Squigs headbutt out of the way. So five, looking for fours. Good. I save one. Got one. And then as my first fight, I am going to select the Mega Knobs, and I'm going to spend two command points. On hit him harder, allowing him to get plus one damage on his power claws for those Mega Knobs. Tanya responds with genetic alchemy, forcing James to only wound on four plus. So let's do uh, hitting on threes. Sounds good. Oh, there you go. I feel two. Okay, three damage each. Okay. Smart play here from Tanya to use a stratagem to interrupt with that last remaining jet bike. She directs all of the attacks into the knob on Smash a Squig and vaporizes it. Uh, nope. We'll fight with Gaspel. Okay. Uh, let's dump the whole thing into this side. Okay. Oh boy. And how much damage each? Four each. Four each? Okay. Yep. That's a whole squad. Yeah. I will go now with the uh, the war boss. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go four. Four. Nice. I take at least one. Come on. I take one. Okay, three flat. Three flat. Then we'll do uh, these squig hog riders. Mm -hmm. Fours. Nope, you got them. Honestly, losing the bikes wasn't that big of a deal for me because they're almost always the first thing that I lose. So basically soaking up a lot of the shooting and leaving my objective secured units back behind them, basically scot-free. Then I'll fight with the boys over here. Minus one to hit. Minus one to hit. Yeah. Five. Uh, so I take one. Take one? I take one. Okay, uh, so and then the uh, power claw. 
This is what the custodians do best. Tons of attacks into the jet bike shield captain, and he comes out having taken only three wounds. Uh, we'll do um, Makari mm -hmm. with his pokey stick. His sticker. <laughs> no. Oh. And that is all of it. Fight back where you have stuff to fight back. Mm -hmm. Tanya hits back with the shield captain into Gazgol and does four damage. So he takes four damage. So that's his four damage this phase. Yep. Okay. That's all the damage he gets this phase. He is mm -hmm. immune now. And then uses the Allurus Terminators to try and take Makari out and the truck. Runs. It is on Makari, right? Yes. So two plus. <laughs> did, did I get him? I failed it on the first roll. I'm gonna spend a CP and re-roll it. Watch another one. No, he's good. So these three Allurus are into the truck. Yep, goodbye truck. One, three, six. How much Two, damage? Four, six, eight, ten. Um, and they're two damage each. Does it explode? Oh, baby. Okay. <gasps> Sorry, Nick. Haha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, Eleven guys inside. Oh, five ones. Equal five of the boys in the truck are dead. Smartly, James places the remaining of that squad behind the truck onto that objective, claiming it for the orcs. Captain on Don Eagle. Mm -hmm. I'm actually just gonna go into the dudes. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. You need to get rid of them because they're gonna get me points. Yeah, no rerolls. Yeah. Two dead boys. Gazgull has laid a crumpin' down on these uh, custodian guard, and uh, the mega knobs have dealt with the Don Eagle jet bikes. I'm feeling pretty good. I have uh, good control of the board right now. Uh, we'll see what the next turn brings. The end of James's turn sees him in a solid position, having had a great turn. He's taken most of the objectives on the table and largely taken the middle of the field, letting him score three points for engaging all fronts and two extra points for overrun. So I'm used to playing guard and guard is always on the back foot and you're always looking to squeak out as many points as possible. So I knew that I had to keep calm really look at the board situation, and I really had to make sure that my movement phase was on point. Time for her to bring the fight to James, and time for that Telemon to do something. I'm gonna pay one CP for maneuver okay. and fire, which okay. allows that shield captain to shoot even though he falls back. Okay. But it's a new turn, so does Trajan give me this one for free? I hope not. He does not. The one remaining custodian guard repositions to try and prevent James bringing his beast snagged boys from reserves. I'm gonna start trying to plink away shots. So plus four in range means these boys get to go in. Okay. Um, I'm gonna just try and take the four off a gas. Off a gas, Makes if sense. I can, in shooting. Rolls? No, nothing. Um, he has two shots. Yep, nothing. I'm going to put the 12 shots from the Dawn Eagle Shield Captain into that unit in the middle there. Yep, my boys. I made one, so two guys died. I'm gonna put his two shots, so he'll go into the Mega Noms. I failed. Down one. Um, I think I'm going to put the two shots, the two big shots, into that truck. Okay. Um, and then everything else is going to go into the Megan Okay. You need them both. I know. And I, I didn't read my card. I rerolled wounds against vehicles. So oh. I'm going to remember that this time. Oh, you would have rerolled your wounds. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's huge. It's huge. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Oh, yeah. So we're going to do the two <laughs> into here. Um, he's not core. There's nobody around. So two. <laughs> Anyway, five shots into the Mega Knots. Yeah. I fail one. One damage. So it finishes that Mega Knob off. And then my Plasma Projector. Okay. Two. How much damage? One damage each. Um, so Flamers from him. Yep. Are, I guess, going to go into the truck? The only option, yeah. yeah. 2d6 Flamer? Yeah. Wow, I'm glad I'm not charging him right now. 
That seems more like it. Two. Fives. I don't fit the save either. How much One damage? damage each. Okay, so <coughs> normally I would need a seven, but I need a six because I'm Solar Watch. Sounds good. I'm not gonna watch you. Go ahead. Okay, Trajan's gonna I'm go in. I'm banking on you failing this charge. Uh, I mean. <laughs> Their shooting is not uh, good. Which I don't make it, so I'm going to pay a CP to re-roll it, but does Trajan give me it back? He does, so nice. this one is so for freebie. free. Yes. <laughs> Did you just fail that? Double ones. Oh no, Tanya, no. I think the play now is actually the Telemon has to go into these. You need to take off that guard. Yeah. If you can make the charge long too and get on the objective yourself, that would be nice. Because they're not OPSEC. So if you can even kill them to a model, you'll mm -hmm. contest. Okay, so the Telemon is gonna go into the Squig Hog boys. Now I'm in Overwatch. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, go for it. No. There, oh, eight, nine. Nine. Come that way. Um, the Galatis yep. is gonna go into the truck. I need an eight, because I get plus one. There Got it is. It. Just shield captain on Dawn Eagle will charge back in. Yep. Okay. Loop. The shield captain charges into Gazgul and the banner into Makari. This is the fight we've all been waiting for. Banner fights banner. And I then that's what he sounds like. the Alaris are going to go into those boys there. Do it. Okay, so what is most important? I actually think this is most important because you're just going to paste him. Gaz takes a few wounds, but he's not out yet. The shield captain is about to realize he's only just poked the beast. So yeah, I'm going to interrupt yeah. and fight with these squig hogs so that they don't uh, all die before they get a chance to fight. Mm -hmm. Some decent rolling sees the orcs bring it down to 12 wounds remaining, but it's not enough to damage or even bracket it. it does not feel like that CP spend was maybe very effective. So the Vexilus is going to go into Makari. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Two plus. Hey. You going to do it? I'm going to CP reroll that. Hey. Uh, how much damage does it do? <laughs> um, It does two damage each. Four yeah. damage? Yeah. If I roll one six, he survives. Okay. No. <laughs> <sighs> He's alive with one wound. Oh no. Hey, it was worth it. If he, you know what? If he gives you the poke back and cause a bunch of mortal wounds, I'm gonna be really happy. Okay, that. fair enough. The Dawn Eagle yep. is gonna go into the boys there. Makes sense. Six attacks, hitting on twos. Six. Six dead boys. Then we'll go with the Alaris yep. here. Tell him on five attacks. Easy. Don't do it. <sighs> Three damage flat each. Four damage flat. The yeah. Three attacks. It's only strength seven. Uh, does it explode? Hope it does. No. It does not. Come on, guys. <laughs> So I still have some fight. Yeah. You, have, you have no fights left, right? So it's just fight back now. Mm -hmm. So I'll start with these three orc boys. Okay. Good. Okay. And then the boss knob with the power claw. Mm -hmm. Four up. Nope. Take two. Two. Five up. Nope, he takes two. Down to four. Gasgill. I'm going to transhuman. So I'm spending one CP for this captain here to have arcane genetic alchemy so that he cannot be wounded on anything less than a four. Oh. You d almost, almost did it. Okay, I'm gonna spend one to CP reroll one of these. Yay! Oh. oh, which leaves him alive with three wounds remaining. He lives. Well, I was pretty sure Gasgol could kill that character, but I guess he can't. Uh, that was a uh, really good CP reroll, um, and now that guy is going to be an annoying thorn in my side for another round. So Makari into the yep. Vexila. Is yep. that what that is? Yes. Just one. Okay. One? Yep. Okay, so I have a six up against Mortal Wounds. 
which I do not save. Uh, hold on, let me check. Okay, so the Vexilus is attempting to fly. Okay, I still, uh, yeah, I have some morale. So these guys here. Morale phase sees a few orcs run away from the top of the table there. So Tanya made all the charges she needed to make. Uh, nothing but death and destruction for my side. I'm starting to feel back foot now. So my turn two comes and goes, and I have made sure to get on as many objectives as possible. I have cleaned out pretty much one half of the board, and I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like I have a little bit of breathing room, and I can go forward making decisions a lot more clear-headed in turn three. Killing may not be the order of the day now. I think survival and holding objectives is the answer. Gaz needs to hold on, as well as my other units that remain strong. Um, we just gotta play to the mission. At the beginning of James's turn, he gains a command point and unfortunately scores zero points for primary, as he only holds the one objective in his deployment zone. He still has some big units in play and a unit of beast naked boys in reserves that he might bring in this round. So don't count him out yet. This guy's gonna jump in this battle wagon. Beep, 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 beep. James decides to bring in his reserve beast snagged boys and does the action retrieve Nachman data with them. Uh, yeah, so Gazgul's gonna stay in. Uh, hopefully I can actually plug that guy with his gun. Yeah, and Makari stays in because, well, he's Makari, he's the bravest grunt. All right, let's do this. Let's go straight into shooting. So we're gonna do, uh, we'll do Gazgul's shots first. Okay. Get out of here. Stop Dude. it. Stop it. Dude. Here's the spin. No. <laughs> Fail three. One, two, three. Got him. Oh. All right, all right. All right. One wound left. One He's wound the left. one left. Oh, there. right. His other gun. Uh, 48 shots of <laughs> speed nine. <Shut> up. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, he survives with one wound. Yeah. Don't like that. These guys are gonna unload with their pistols into the Dreadnought. Okay. Just because it's something to do. Why not? He's good. Good. Estonians are just so tough. Let's do uh, this truck. Yep. So first, rockets. Okay. My last CP. Okay. I'm spending on arcane genetic alchemy. Got it. Fours. One goes through. Okay, three damage. Big shooter. Mm -hmm. Same target. Good. Just taking all the shots. Ah, uh, that could have gone better. Let's uh, let's do some charges. I think. Okay, I cannot overwatch. You cannot overwatch. Nope. So first we'll do uh, mega knobs. Yep. Six. Work. Mm -hmm. War boss will charge him. These boys here are gonna charge the Dreadnought. I'm hoping for big so I can hit that objective. Okay. Okay, that's, that's pretty nine, big. That's nine, It's pretty big. Oh yeah. It's yours now. The other Dreadnought at the top of the table gets swarmed by both squads of orcs. Can they get through that armor? Let's just start <laughs> on this Dreadnought. Sure. So we'll pile these guys all in. Mm -hmm. Threes. Five go through. Okay. Four left. So second unit. Yep. Rinse and repeat. Okay. Start. You do one. Oh yeah, you get to re-roll your, you get to roll your feeling pains. Yeah. If you make, if you make two of these, you survive. You do hey, it. Hey, I take one. Oh my God. Yahtzee, almost. How is this stinking dreadnought still walking around? He should be dead. That's too many, too many feel no pains. Okay, well, let's bracket him now. You may try. No, I will do. There is no try. Two. No, two go through. Okay. So he's down to 10. War boss, into the Telemon Dreadnought. Mm hmm mm hmm Force. All good. Okay. So let's do it again. Yep. Oh, okay. uh, let's do uh, his squigs just to see if they do anything yeah. too. 
six up. Nope. He's down two up. Four up. Nope, I'll go through. Something. He's down to five. Combat now goes to ongoing combat, and the defender chooses first, which means the shield captain is going to get a chance to kill Gaz before he gets the fight. Oh no! This is a massive blow to James's army. But Gaz is not quite done yet. Sixes. Sorry. Come on, sixes. No. Dang no, it. one six. Dang it. So D3 mortals for three. Six is the save. Oh my god. That is seven <laughs> six up field mode pains in one sorry. assault phase. It hurts. I'm sorry. Mm. Go ahead and uh, kill uh, Makari now. The brave is caught. Okay, well, I'm gonna start here. Yep. Uh, is that uh, last right now? Six. He doesn't crack it, right? He doesn't. Yeah. Three. Four dead boys. And there it is. Orcs is never beaten. A stratagem allowing Gaskell to do one last round of fighting before he's removed from the table. Revenge. Four. Nope, you got him. Same time? <laughs> yeah, synchronized. I'm so frazzled right now. I'm having trouble focusing. I just don't know what to do. We see James end his turn with 17 points, but that zero on primary this turn is hitting hard. Things are looking pretty good. Uh... I have pretty good board control at this point in time. I've got a number of objectives. I feel pretty good on the primary game. I just need to make sure that I don't make any critical mistakes and I need to try and control his movement around the board as much as possible. Tanya gains a precious command point and scores only four points on primary, bringing her total to 27 at the top of turn three. I will commence some shooting. I'm gonna put them into the, uh, the flamers into the squad that I've been working on. Yep, yep. Please. Um, minus one, only minus one. Five. Trajan will shoot into here. Okay. It's minus points, you say. Okay. And that's I'm his just, only target, you might as well shoot him first. Yeah. Because if he pops this thing off, then they'll have a clear shot at the boys. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Two left. But you didn't have enough there to take it out. It had um, six wounds. Well, I guess all of their shooting will go in. Okay. Oh. Okay. It does explode. No. <laughs> that truck has tanked so many shots. James has to be happy with how that tank has protected his units for so long. So you're looking at about a, it's a seven, so six? Okay. That's what we're gonna try. Okay. That's not it. Not it. Do I re-roll it? Yes, but it's a new turn. Does Trajan give it back to me? No, so I spend it. Okay, now fail it again. No. Oh, man. The Alaris will go into the Meganons? Yep, you can't fail. The Telamon will go in. Trajan. Three. No, he's in. Trajan. The custodians. Five. Four. Don Eagle jet bike into Six. my mech. Yes. Six. No. Oh, no. Take four. I believe he's alive with one wound. So Trajan is going to try and actually do something. Okay. Um. So he's going to go into the mega knobs. Yep. Hitting on twos. Oh, no, I made oh. four of them. So it kills the one guy with the wound on. Okay. Telemon. Uh, yep, yeah, the Telemon is gonna go in, so he's got five attacks. No. Ugh, oh, three flat. Four flat. Squad. No, you got a chance. The orcs managed to take out their remaining wounds on the Galatus Dreadnought. Does he blow up? 
but to add insult to injury, it explodes, taking orcs with him. So you're all done, so all I have is my fight backs? Yes. So, uh, the Big Mac with the shock attack gun. That's all you need. He's kicking you. Okay. The end of Tanya's turn, and though she didn't score any extra points this round, despite likely scoring grind them down at the end of the battle round, there's very little James can do to catch up at this point. He scores four points for primary at the beginning of his turn, and though he tries valiantly, nothing he does seems to have an effect at this point. With all of James's heavy hitters off the table, James is just not going to be able to recover. Tanya has just hit too hard. He does manage to charge the Telemon and kill it in close combat, but the writing is on the wall. He will score another three points for engaging all fronts and manages to retrieve Nachman data with the unit at the top left, but he's not going to be able to be in a position to score any more points in the rest of the game. On Tanya's turn four, she will be able to all but table James, scoring her full primary and racking up enough points to make this game a foregone conclusion. With paint scores in, our final tally sees us at 38 points for James to 79 for Tanya. Victory for the Custodes and a first victory for Tanya on our channel. Well done. <gasps> I had to bring the busted army to do it though. A big thank you to both Tanya and James for making the trip out to the studio today. Thank you for giving us such an entertaining game. Also, a big thank you to you, our viewer, without whom we honestly could not be doing this. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all those things that keep a channel like ours going, and please consider supporting us directly on Patreon. You get our releases early, Discord access, and some other exclusive benefits like live streams and more. And we also absolve you of any guilt about using an ad blocker while watching our videos. Lastly, another big thank you to our sponsor of today's episode, Audible. Remember to go to audible.com slash playontabletop to get your free 30-day Audible trial while using the code playontabletop. It helps support the channel and you can find some great audiobooks there as well. Well, that's all for all of us here at the Play On Studio. This has been Nicholas Frey signing off and until we see you next time in the grim darkness of the far flung future, play on. James conceded, which always kind of makes me feel a little bit sad, but at the same time, I won. We had a great game, I had a great time, great game. I think that if I just rolled more statistically that this game could have gone completely differently. We'll be back, orcs are never beat. Way to go, Tanya. You brought a better army than me. <laughs> God, I'm not, I'm just kidding. <laughs>